Nearly a year ago, we had a look at Azahai Linux and its amazing work getting Linux running on Apple Silicon. And we concluded back then that there were definitely some limitations, particularly with the M1 MacBook Air that I was using. It just didn't really have enough RAM and it didn't have enough storage. Well, today we're going to have another look using an M1 Pro with uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte of storage. And we're going to check out what's changed, what's new, and maybe, just maybe, we might finally be able to call 2025 the year of Linux on Mac. The biggest issue we found when using the M1 MacBook Air was its 256 gigabyte SSD. The downside to how this all works is that you do still need to have macOS installed and you do still need macOS in a partition for doing system firmware updates and all that sort of stuff. So realistically, you have to keep quite a chunk of disk space available to macOS. And when you've only got a small 256 gig SSD, uh, yeah, you end up with at most maybe 120 or so available to Linux, which is a shame. So that was kind of one of the limitations I definitely found last time. Couple that with the fact that the base M1 only had eight gigabytes of RAM. So things like gaming and stuff just wasn't gonna happen. That video also took place before they'd released their new GPU drivers. So gaming was a bit patchy anyway, but that's all changed. So with the power of this M1 Pro, uh, we will be able to take a better look. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and like I said, a terabyte SSD. So we'll be able to easily partition that into like 500 gig for each system. And I also want to kind of preface this video and just say that the, the work that this team has done to get Linux working on, on Mac hardware, on Apple Silicon, is beyond extraordinary. We're gonna have a look and we're gonna see if it's kind of a usable day-to-day -day thing and I'm probably gonna have criticisms but those are not criticisms of the team in any way. The work that they have done has been absolutely amazing. Just the fact that it boots would in itself be an extraordinary thing, but I think we're gonna be able to do a lot more than just that. Getting everything set up and booted uh, hasn't changed really at all since the last time we had a look at it. So do go check out my previous video if you wanna see more in depth into the installer. Uh, but essentially, you just run a shell script within macOS and it guides you through the whole installation process. You then reboot and you're into Fedora and you do some final setup to configure your user account and everything like that. And you're done. You are into Linux running on your uh, Mac under Apple Silicon, which is incredibly impressive. And I dare say this is actually one of the best installation processes for Linux that I've ever experienced. The fact that you can do most of the setup within Mac OS itself is extraordinary and there really isn't much kind of hackery that you have to do uh, as a as a user the install guide is very very self-explanatory and it works really well i think i have to give them credit there of course normal preface around just running random shell scripts maybe check out what the script is actually doing first before you run it especially as it does require root permissions so essentially it's going to have full control over your computer while it's running uh, I didn't see any issues. It's obviously a quite an established big open source project. So, you know, I think those would be flagged by the community, but it's still something to consider. Maybe just have making a good habit not to just blindly run shell scripts. So like I say, installation, nice and easy, all set up. So the main thing that we're gonna look at here is we're gonna answer a couple of questions that people had on my previous video, but the big change that's happened since my last video was uh, the GPU drivers was actually having uh, real support for running games on your Mac. So maybe we can game again <laughs> on Apple Macs. Do some tests and want to obviously start with some benchmarking just to understand the performance between the two systems. So back it within Mac OS and uh, before we did the installation, I actually ran some benchmarks. We ran uh, Geekbench as we always do. And on the CPU side, we got a score of 2,400 and five for the single core and 10,593 on the multi-core. Running the OpenCL benchmark, we got a score of 39,834. So those are our kind of benchmark baseline running under macOS. In terms of gaming under macOS, well, 
there isn't a whole lot you can actually do, really. I mean, there are games, but there aren't a lot of games that I have that work. One that does work is Minecraft. Um, I mean, Minecraft basically runs anywhere that has a half-decent Java implementation and some sort of graphics. Here is no different. It actually runs incredibly well. Running at 1080p on full high settings across the board, we're getting 100 plus FPS. It is buttery smooth and actually these uh, these M1 chips are a great way to run Minecraft, mainly because Minecraft is incredibly CPU heavy and these chips are incredibly efficient from a CPU perspective. So the only other game that I really had that is vaguely modern and has macOS support is No Man's Sky. And at 1080p low settings, we were getting about 60 FPS. It was quite a smooth system, uh, but there were some really weird lighting glitches going on. There was some odd stuff happening on the screen. It wasn't, I wouldn't say playable in that regard. It was very annoying. And let's be honest, uh, this is running under Metal and not many developers have kind of really taken that on board, especially on the kind of AAA title side of things. It's it's not the greatest landscape of gaming available. So yeah, but again, that is our benchmarks that we have. So booting over into Fedora and everything from the desktop side of things is running really, really smoothly. I think you're going to have a really nice kind of experience here if you actually just want a Linux environment to be able to do things. There are obviously some drawbacks by the fact that these are ARM CPUs. Linux support from a software perspective is still fairly limited in the ARM space, uh, certainly outside of the server world. Things like the Raspberry Pi have definitely expanded that support, which is good to see, but there are still some limitations. And one of those limitations is definitely around Steam. So this GPU stuff, was really cool that they managed to implement it, but then they faced the next issue of, well, how do you actually get games to run? Because it's not just the same as on a normal um, x86 system where you just fire up Steam, fire up Proton, and off you go, uh, something like on the Steam Deck. Um, this, because it is ARM, there is an additional layer of translation having to be done. So they've actually kind of done some wrapping around Steam and um, bringing in some level of uh, virtualization or emulation using Box64, I believe, to essentially emulate an x86 system so that Steam can install games, can install Proton, and can work. So there is definitely like an additional layer there, like not only if they had to essentially handcraft GPU drivers, they have then also having to kind of emulate an x86 system because there just isn't support right now for kind of gaming on ARM. There's rumors that Steam are working on uh, versions of Proton for ARM and there are rumors that that might happen. That would certainly be very cool. But as it stands right now, you're essentially having to emulate x86 and then run Proton. So there's gonna be performance bottlenecks, bottlenecks there. So before we start any gaming on Fedora, I did want to run Geekbench again. Um, and I did find that on the single core, we got 2,208. Uh, so a little bit lower on the single core, but multi-core, we got 10,528. So we were actually very, very close to the multi-core on macOS, which really shows how far the drivers and the implementation here has really gone. It's really, really impressive on the CPU front. Unfortunately, running the GPU test under OpenCL, it wouldn't finish. It would crash every single time. So I don't have a good comparison there. We're gonna have to put some gaming to the test to see that sort of GPU performance. One thing that does run under ARM though, of course, is Minecraft, because there is definitely a stable Java implementation here. And uh, this runs pretty well. It doesn't run quite as well as it does on Mac OS. We're getting around 70 FPS at 1080p, but it's still entirely playable. Uh, definitely impressed that it's it's stable enough like you could play this with no problem all day long it wouldn't be an issue so then i did have a look under steam and getting steam installed and everything else super straightforward their team has really done a good job at kind of packaging that and making it easy to run uh, but uh, in terms of actual game gaming well let's have a look i will say for some reason the video quality on my recordings for these games has come out terribly it's not really an issue but in terms of we can still see the FPS and, and explain it, but yeah, not really sure what happened there. Sorry about that. 
But first off, of course, you know, we have to try out Half-Life 2. And this ran fine. It was about 80 plus FPS, kind of smooth once it settled itself down a bit. So it was entirely playable. Of course, though, I would 100% expect that to be the case. This is an old game running at only 1080p. It, you would hope that it would run well. And yeah, entirely playable. A good baseline for something a bit more complicated. Next game I wanted to look at is the only other game we have kind of a direct comparison with Mac OS, and that's No Man's Sky. And the experience here was pretty dreadful. Uh, at low settings, 1080p, I was lucky to hit 10 frames per second. Textures weren't loading right, they were really blurry. It was a complete lag fest, uh, not playable at all. So even though we were experiencing issues under a Mac OS, uh, there was still a stark difference there, um, which is a shame. So my next kind of go-to has definitely got to be Doom Eternal, and uh, this would not run. It actually just errored out saying unknown GPU vendor. There might be a way to get around this. Uh, it's not something I've really looked into much, but uh, I know that this game particularly can be quite fussy about the, the GPUs that it supports. So it's a shame that we can't get this one running. However, I was able to get Doom 2016 running, and uh, that actually ran really quite well. Unfortunately, the Mango HUD died, wouldn't run with this for some reason, it just crashed any time you launched Doom. Uh, but in-game, just kind of going about uh, at medium settings, 1080p, I would say it was entirely smooth, entirely playable, definitely like 40 plus FPS. Um, yeah, a decent experience, again, considering we're running this on an integrated graphics, essentially. And then, again, because I hate myself, we had to check out Cyberpunk. Uh, and this did run, which I was surprised about, to be fair. Uh, but at 1080p low settings, we were getting about 8 FPS, which is choppy to say the least. And it's a shame, considering uh, we were actually getting very similar FPS on this tiny Intel N150 integrated thing. So I would have expected a lot more here from Apple Silicon. Uh, but unfortunately it just wasn't there. And I don't know whether that's just the there isn't enough performance there. I haven't really got anything to compare it to back on the macOS side. Or maybe it's just a driver thing that needs improving. I hope it's the driver because it does mean that it could improve over time. But nonetheless, um, not playable at all. So I did have some questions that were kind of asked multiple times on the previous video, uh, which I just wanted to kind of cover here. One of those is could we boot from an external SSD um, or some sort of pen drive or something like that? Um, and the answer is no, but kind of. So the actual boot partition and the actual bit that starts the boot process has to be on the internal SSD. Uh, these the Apple Silicon devices will not boot from an external source. You have to boot from that um, SSD. Having said that, uh, there's no reason why other partitions in your Linux setup aren't on an external drive. You could definitely do that. You could have your home drive on an external SSD or something like that. So if you were in a resource constrained situation like the M1 Air, uh, you actually, yeah, you could definitely use an external um, NVMe drive or something like that to kind of get decent enough performance and keep most of your files actually off the internal SSD. So another question is, can um, Azari, Azhari, oh, I'm, I must admit, I'm so bad at pronouncing things, I do apologize. It's dyslexia, dyslexia for you. Uh, anyway, can the Linux distro uh, interact and access the macOS file system? So out of the box, no, there isn't the driver included to support the Apple file system, but there are implementations under Linux for drivers that allow you to access that data. So yes, you could set this up and you would then be able to access those drives. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure in terms of data integrity, it's necessarily a good idea. I'm not sure how good those drivers are. Uh, certainly, I'm not going to give any advice on what to pick there. But uh, yeah, th theoretically, you definitely could. And then the final question, which kind of leads me on to a bit of a conclusion here, is uh, do we really need bare metal Linux? I think this was something that a couple of people had kind of alluded to or directly asked by the fact that you know, we have good virtualization uh, available and you can run good Linux distributions under things like UTM and they work very well. They're very smooth. It's a very good setup. And obviously you haven't got all this issue with like having to split your hard drive and having dedicated 
time in Linux and dedicated time in Mac OS. You, you know, all these sorts of things. There are loads of benefits to just running a virtual machine with Linux installed on it. it really boils down to what you're planning to do with your machine. Um, I think we are going to see continued improvements to things like this GPU, these GPU drivers. And I really think we could get to a place where actually gaming under Linux on these uh, machines is actually a pretty nice experience. We're not there yet. We definitely saw that in the benchmarks. We're really not there yet. But I think it could happen. And that's the kind of thing that you don't really get out of uh, virtualization and visual, you know, that sort of thing and taking creating virtual machines. The other issue, of course, is well, are you someone that actually wants access to macOS? Maybe you do and you just want to have Linux in its own contained world away from macOS. With the changes that macOS keep pushing towards AI and other sorts of additional kind of systems that are being bolted onto the operating system, it's becoming heavier and heavier. And I can definitely see why some people would want to avoid that entirely, in which case a bare metal solution is a much better option. But having said that as well, of course, yeah, benefits to both. So definitely depends on your use cases. I would say in terms of should you install this on your uh, Mac right now? Yeah, I mean, we're getting there now. There are still some things that aren't supported, things like Thunderbolt, and the website does give good, good compatibility descriptions on what is and isn't supported. For me, as a daily driver, it would work perfectly fine. I am not going to use it as any sort of gaming machine, that's for sure. We're, we're long off that. But if you want to do some very light gaming, older gaming, it actually works quite well now. And again, incredibly impressive that these drivers have basically been like written by hand for this GPU. It's very, very cool. So there you have it. We have touch base, had a look at Linux on Apple Silicon in 2025. Is this the year of Linux on Mac? Ah, I think we're so close. And I think ultimately that's the issue with it being the year of Linux on anything. It's just never quite there. It's just never quite going to cover everyone's use cases. If you've got a niche use case that, that is covered under the support, for example, if you're just doing very CPU heavy tasks, um, yeah, it, it's ready to go. Go for it. But if you want a game and you want to do other things, not really. Having said that, if you want to do those sorts of things, you're probably not going to do that under macOS either. So, yeah, not it's it's a mixed bag. It really, really is, and it will continue to be. But I can continue to enjoy playing with it. I enjoy hacking about with the licks and getting it running on things that shouldn't be running it. So uh, this really appeals to me there. But thank you very much for watching. I am going to wrap it up there. So I hope you have enjoyed this little look into Linux on Mac in 2025. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye for now.